All right, guys, it is that time of year again. I'm going to be making an epic tutorial video today on the best tips for growing your Pinterest traffic. I've uh, done some of these videos in the past and they've gotten lots of views. It seems that my audience here on YouTube, you guys are most interested in my Pinterest training videos. If you go through my profile, you're going to see lots of previous Pinterest videos I've done in the past that got high amounts of views. And while a lot of these tips are still relevant today, I wanted to do another update video here in 2019. As you know, the Pinterest algorithm changes just like the Instagram algorithm, Facebook algorithm, Twitter. All these social media sites are constantly changing and different things that worked years ago are no longer working today. New things are working today that didn't work years ago. So it's good to stay updated on these trends and what's going on on these different platforms. Now, if you're new, Pinterest is a huge tool, which you can see here just by looking at these basic numbers. You can get thousands of people looking at your content, clicking through to your website, to your product pages. It's not just a platform where people share recipes and candle photos and travel photos and flowers and things like that. It's definitely a place for both men and women. And it's a place for both normal users or personal accounts as well as business users, entrepreneurs and business accounts. So Pinterest is great. It's helped my blog grow tremendously since I started in 2017 using Pinterest. Right now it is February. It's the off season. I'm in the golf niche, as you can see here, golf practice guides. So I'm getting 150,000 monthly viewers uh, seeing my pins here on Pinterest, and I'm getting 10 to 12,000 clicking through a month to my website, as you can see here with the engagement stat. So that number is going to go up once we get near to golf season, usually in the spring, in April, May, it starts ramping up. And by summer, June, July, uh, I'm somewhere around three to 400,000 monthly viewers and, you know, somewhere around 25 to 30,000 people come into my website a month from Pinterest, which helps t my sales take off again from all these Pinterest customers that are finding me through Pinterest. So just one example of why it's important to use Pinterest to grow your business, uh, to grow your brand, to get in front of thousands of people. Now today, again, we're going to talk about how to grow your traffic, uh, starting with, you know, some profile optimization tips, uh, different things you can do when uploading pins nowadays that you couldn't before. So we're kind of just going to freestyle. I'm going to be jumping in and out of different pages here. Uh, but we're going to basically do this at a beginner's level. So feel free to skip around the video uh, if you feel certain parts are more relevant to you than others. Uh, starting off here, uh, basically how Pinterest works, you upload a pin using this little plus sign here. Click create a pin. It's going to pop up the new pin uploader. So again, this is something that's changed in 2019. Their pin builder, it's got you know, a whole new layout design. They've got a title section up here now where you actually give titles to your pins. And I'm going to show you what that looks like out here on my website. So if we click in here to one of my most recently uploaded pins, you're going to see the title I put in. That's basically what the title box is. It's just kind of a heading. So I wrote in golf chipping drills or Adidas golf shoe review, golf YouTube channels. In the old days, I believe Pinterest used to kind of have some different pin descriptions down here. It used to show people how many repins it had. They've gone away with, you know, that stuff and they've added in this this new just a title kind of and then for pins that I've uploaded, you're seeing numbers here. Um, normal users that are looking at my pins, they can't see these numbers. This is only for me since I'm the admin, since this is my account, my website that this pin is linked to. So, I mean, you can scroll through here and we can see that that's another feature that they've added to 2019 version of Pinterest. You can now quickly scroll through your pins under your pin section on your profile and take a quick look at how your pins are doing, which is really helpful. Uh, before, you'd have to, you know, manually click into a pin and you'd have to scroll down here and look at the little pin count right here, which shows one. Now, instead, they've added this analytics section up here where you can click on see more stats to get a more detailed view outside of just the 30-day range that they're showing here. These are the last 30-day statistics. 
Uh, but instead of clicking into the pin, you can also just quickly, you know, scroll down the list here and take a look at some analytics to see which pins are doing well. You know, they're getting thousands of views. How many clicks are they actually getting? You know, what's that conversion rate? Are people actually clicking through to the website? Or are they just checking out the pin and saving the pin? So you can kind of learn more what's working, what's not. Uh, but getting back here again to the uploader. So that's the title feature. We've got the description where you can say more about the pin. So one of the first tips to succeeding on Pinterest is ranking your pins in search. So if we hop over here to an example, if I typed in, you know, golf practice, that's one I've been using in a lot of these videos, you're going to see some pins of mine pop up here. So we've got this try our skills challenge pin over here. We've got the break 90 pin over here, 10 best golf drills. So these three pins of mine are ranking at the top of the search results for the search term golf practice. Now, again, that's not going to happen uh, if you've got a brand new Pinterest account. It takes time to get to this point. Your account has to gain authority in Pinterest. You have to have repeated success where you show Pinterest that people are interested in your pins by getting them lots of repins, lots of engagement, clicks, comments, things like that. And as people engage and click on your pins, that's going to help them move up the rankings until they make it to the top where they're more likely to be seen by people searching different things in your niche. So again, if you are in the fitness niche, for example, you would type in something fitness related like fitness tips and those pins that are ranking at the top here, they've had to go through probably months and months of hanging out on Pinterest, collecting shares, comments, clicks to the website that they're linking to. And over time, those click-through rates have increased, those shares have increased, and that's caused them to get better in the rankings, and now they've worked their way up here to the top. So that's going to be a huge portion of your Pinterest traffic in addition to your followers that follow you. Now, in order to get some pins ranking in the, in the Pinterest ranking search engine, you want to use some keywords. So when I type in pin descriptions, I make sure that they flow. So, for example, if I was doing one on fitness tips, then I would say, you know, I would just type a normal sentence that a human being would read. So check out these fitness tips. There's the keyword inserted right there. Check out these fitness tips to help you, you know, grow your muscles and I don't know, get lean, whatever you want to use for a fitness description. I know that's a terrible example, but think of different words that people type in. So fitness tips, uh, muscles, get lean. You could type in, you know, lose fat by working out your core muscles. So somebody typing in the words core muscles. So any words you type in here could potentially be keywords that people are searching here in the search results. And so that's going to tell Pinterest. Pinterest is going to scan your pin. They're going to look at your description here and that's going to tell them what your pin is about when you're uploading it. And then they're going to be able to decide, okay, when people search different things in the search bar, how relevant is this pin to those search phrases? And that's going to help you start ranking for different keywords. And then again, the title I'm sure plays a role as well. So you want your title to be relevant to what the pin is that you're uploading and what the blog post is that it's linking to. But I'm sure your title keywords also have some impact. So make sure you're using some keywords that think people are going to be searching, you know, in the search bar up here. Now your pin image, it's got to be a vertical image. So you're going to upload it from your computer. Personally, I use a website called Canva. So I'll go ahead and type them in, take a peek at them. You just go to www.canva.com. You can sign up for a free account and they're going to have a Pinterest template. You can kind of see a little preview here. You've got your designs. Uh, they've got different favorite templates. So logos, social media posts, presentations. They've got one for Pinterest. And all it is is a vertical Pinterest image here. Now in 2019, Pinterest actually recommends a two by three ratio. So in terms of height, it needs to be three times the width two times. So one example Pinterest recommends is a 900 pixel by 600 pixels. So 900 pixels tall, 600 pixels wide. That's the three by two ratio. Now I've found that the taller pins still seem to do well. And I still use the old Pinterest dimensions, which were 1,107 pixels by I think like 700 pixels. 
Um, so I've, I'm still on the taller images. I would recommend maybe doing 1000 or 1100 pixels tall by 600 pixels wide. So I would still recommend using these taller pin images. They seem to perform better in search results. They take up a little more real estate on the page. So I think they pop out a little better. This is an example of a long tall one that somebody did. This is another example of a tall pin. And, an and then this is a shorter pin, which is like a square. This is a kind of a shorter one that's more of a square. So there's a, usually a mix. It's not dead set that it has to be a tall, long, lengthy one. But out of all of these, you're going to notice that the ones that pop out more are these three big tall ones that take up more of the page rather than allowing space for somebody else's pin to creep in. So tall pins are still what I would recommend. You don't want to make them super tall where they don't quite fit in the whole page like you know, this one, for example, it's almost too tall where you have to keep scrolling to keep looking at it. Uh, instead, you know, try to find that happy medium, which I've found to be about 1,100 pixels tall by 600 pixels wide. So that's, that's pretty much it for the image itself as far as what's changed in 2019. They, they, you know, they recommend a 900 by 600 pin dimension size. I'm suggesting you still go around that and still make your pin taller than that. Uh, other than that, they don't really uh, care about what you name the file image. I know in the past it's probably still helpful when you're uh, downloading an image and getting ready to upload it to Pinterest that you give the image a file name so it's going to have keywords in it like fitness tips dot, you know, jpg or fitness tips dot png, whatever file name you give it. Still should try to include some keywords in the file name, but this isn't a ranking factor. Pinterest has come out and said that the file name probably doesn't play any role in helping it rank in the search results. All right, so that's the image uploading tool. You can also save from site, so you can click this button here. You could, it's gonna enter a website URL and then whatever images are on that website page, those are gonna be the ones you can choose from to use as the image that links to the URL. However, I prefer to just manually upload my own pins, again, that I create in Canva using this free photo creating tool. Uh, they do have a paid version that's got some advanced features, but it's not necessary. All right, then you're gonna type the URL in here. This is where you're gonna link it to your blog post or your product page that you're trying to drive traffic to off of Pinterest, and you're gonna pick a board. Now, when you pick a board, it's gonna be important that you pick the board it's most relevant to to start is that's gonna be the initial board that Pinterest looks at to try to determine what that pin is about. So for example, I pin all of my pins when I upload them from my blog to my website board. That's just where I jumpstart them. However, with the new update, Pinterest is saying that you know they want it pinned to a more relevant board so that that's what's you know gonna tell Pinterest what it's about. So if I was uploading a blog post about the golf swing, I'd be better off uploading that direct to the golf swing board first, and then later I can repin it to my golfpracticeguides.com website URL board. That way it at least starts out on this board that uses specific keywords, golf swing tips, to tell Pinterest that that pin is related to the golf swing, if that's the example I was using. If I was doing one on putting, I would come down and find my board called golf putting tips and upload it to that board to tell Pinterest that it's about putting. So same goes for you. If you're doing a fitness tips one, you'd want to upload it to the board titled fitness tips or fitness exercises, whatever's most relevant. And that's going to help you jumpstart that pin and get it shown to your audience, your followers, as well as give it a chance to then get picked up in the search engines. So let's go ahead and pick a board here. So that's the basic tips. Give some keywords in the title. Give a healthy description. You want it to be a couple sentences long. Don't just put in keyword stuffing where you just type in some different keywords with commas, separating them. That used to be the old way of doing it, but it's spammy. And in the future, if they go in through any algorithm updates, you don't want to get all those pins uh, you know, demoted or or get your account in trouble for using those spammy tactics. So in the old days, I used to type in golf, you know, golf tips, golf drills. I would just use a bunch of commas. Instead, you want a real, legit description. Pinterest is actually gonna scan your description. They're also gonna scan the website URL that you type in here. So when I type in, you know, one of my website blogs, golfpracticeguys.com, you know, slash swing tips, they're actually gonna scan that blog article. 
because you've connected your website to your account and you've given them the URL, they're going to they're going to look at the the page title for this blog post and it better match up. So the page title is going to be about golf swing tips and here I'm telling Pinterest this pins about fitness tips that doesn't match up. So if this happens to be, you know, a golf article about fitness tips, then it's going to match up. They're going to know, okay, the title of this blog post is the same as what they're naming the title here. And they're going to look at your meta description. So that's this little description out here on Google. So let's just go to Google real quick. Type in fitness tips. Anytime somebody searches something in Google, they're going to see the blog post title show up here, this big blue title. And then the meta description is this paragraph right here. So this is where you're going to see Google highlights and bold fitness tips. These are the keywords used in the meta description out here. Now, Pinterest is a search engine. It's smart, just like Google is a search engine. Google's smart. Pinterest has the algorithm, the capability of scanning your blog post title and meta description. So you want this description to match it. You could even copy paste your meta description for your blog post and paste it into here if you just want to use the exact same description. Because just like Google, you're using a meta description out here so that searchers searching different things, they can read your meta description, the whole point of it. So they read it, they can learn what they're clicking into to make sure it's relevant to them. So this example, 101 fitness tips that rock, that's a good catchy title. And then they made their meta description tell you what it's about. So if you click here, you're going to be getting 101 fitness tips that will help you reach your health, weight loss, and wellness goals. So I would just advise copying this meta description and pasting it here into your pin description because that's the same thing. People searching your pins, they're going to be typing in different keywords like they would on Google, except it's on Pinterest. So they would type in fitness tips and then they're going to click on your pin and they're going to take a look at it. So let's go ahead and click on one and then they're going to see your description here. And if you're using, you know, the same meta description, then that's probably going to help them say, OK, it's worth clicking through and they're going to click through to your website to read your article. So that's the gist of the Pinterest upload builder. Let's go ahead and click the back button. All right, so give it a good title, some keywords, give it a good description, use some keywords. You can also use hashtags now, so hashtags fitness, hashtags exercise. You can use up to 20. So in 2019, you're allowed to use hashtags and you're allowed up to 20 hashtags. I would recommend maybe 10 to 15. You don't want to stuff too many hashtags. It starts clouding you know, the space. You're only allowed so many characters anyways. So if you've already used a description that's a couple hundred words or a couple hundred characters, you're not going to be able to fit in a whole lot of hashtags before you hit that character cutoff limit. Uh, I typically add you know, anywhere from five to ten hashtags. You want to pick hashtags that are pretty popular. That way your pin shows up uh, in high traffic to hashtags. That way if people are searching you know, hashtags to try to find relevant content, Hopefully your pin shows up at the top for a little while. Now it does rank them by order of when they were last uploaded. So you're going to notice here, this is says 14, 20 seconds ago, 50 seconds ago, one minute ago. So the time's actually changing. So these are all the most recent pins that were just uploaded a minute ago using that hashtag. So as you scroll down here, we're going to notice some of these were uploaded four and five minutes ago. So this is going to tell you how busy or how highly trafficked a specific hashtag is. So as we scroll down here, we might get way down this page and it was only 15 minutes ago. So that can tell you that per hour, there's probably hundreds of thousands of pins, you know, hundreds or thousands of pins that are uploaded for this specific hashtag. So this is a very high volume hashtag that gets a lot of people searching through and a lot of people uploading pins too. So this would be a good one to use. You also want to dial it down a little bit. You don't want one that's you know way too active because your pins gonna get buried so for example pins that pinned you know 25 minutes ago they're already way down the page here so unless somebody's got you know big intent of scrolling down this hashtag feed for a while they probably won't come across the ones that were pinned a couple hours ago it would take a while to get all the way down to find the ones that were pinned a couple hours ago so this would be a good example of one that's got a lot of traffic but it also could be an example of a hashtag that's probably overused where your pins will get buried. So maybe for the first hour, they're going to be visible, you know, somewhere at the top middle of the page here. And then after a couple hours, 
it's probably unlikely you're going to get much traffic to them because they're going to be so far down the page from all the new pins that have been uploaded using that same hashtag. All right, so the best way to do that is just type in different hashtags. You'll get different ideas that pop in your head. Try them out and look at the frequency, how many pins seem to be showing up here in the last 10 to 15 minutes, and that'll give you a gauge of how long your content could last. For example, in the golf niche, if we type in the words golf practice, like before, only now we're doing it as a hashtag, you're gonna be able to see that golf is way less crowded. You know, 22 hours ago was the last pin that was one of my own. Uh, two days ago was one of the most recent pins that was one of my own. So you can see this this hashtag doesn't get a lot of uh, a lot of people using it yet. Most of these pins are my pins that I've uploaded using this exact hashtag. However, if I go to a more general one like golf, that's going to have more recent pins that you're going to see have pinned in the last five to ten minutes. So you want a good mix overall of hashtags. Uh, you know, five to ten hashtags. Use a mix of high volume ones as well as some moderate, as well as a couple that are low volume, and that should get you a, a good spread of getting your pins to show up in the hashtag feeds so that people searching them could come across your content. All right, let's talk about some other traffic tips to help you out. So, next, let's talk about some keyword ideas. So, a minute ago, we talked about how important it is to use keywords in your pin descriptions in your pin title when you're uploading your pin. You also want to use keywords in your boards because people can search by pins or they can click this drop down and they can look up boards or they can look up people. So you also want to use good keywords in your board descriptions as well as your pin descriptions and in your profile in your about section or your bio you want to use some keywords as well since people can search based on profiles. If they click on people here for example you can see all the people that are related to fitness tips based on you know their profile including the words fitness in them or using the words fitness tips somewhere in their profile so that's a way to get found as well people don't always just search based on pins they'll also search boards and profiles all right so let's go back though to the example here of the all pins now whenever you type something into pinterest here these are the initial pins that pull up that are ranking. However, you're going to notice this little box right here at the top that's got different buttons you can click on. These are additional keyword suggestions Pinterest is offering you to further define your search and get more specific. So while the general most popular terms are probably going to be hard to rank for, in the fitness niche, for example, ranking for fitness, fitness tips, these are going to be highly competitive keywords that's probably not going to land you a spot at the top of the results here these are probably you know some big time websites big time accounts that have been around for a while that have had these pins up here for a long time getting high high levels of clicks and shares so it's going to be hard to overtake them but if you fine tune it and you get more niche down for example fitness tips uh, for men we could click on that and all that's going to do is add it to the search bar so now it added fitness tips for men and now you're going to see a whole new set of pins showing up here in the rankings so you can niche down and that's one way to get more specific using these more specific keywords they're called long tail keywords use more specific keywords in your in your descriptions for your pin boards your profile and your pin descriptions when you're uploading pins and that's one way to start ranking for these longer tail keywords we can keep going we can type in losing weight fitness tips for men losing weight it's going to pop up a whole new set of pins again so you can just keep niching down a couple of times. You'll notice that it just disappeared. So I think it's going to let you niche down up to maybe six words uh, using their tool. You can still add in longer tail keywords if you'd like, um, but it's a good way too to rank for multiple keywords. You're going to see here fitness, fitness tips. Those are two different keywords if you break them up. Um, we've got fitness tips for men. That's its own keyword. Fitness tips for men losing weight. That's its own keyword. Uh, men losing weight is its own keyword uh, losing weight is its own keyword so you can see all the different combinations you can make of different keywords here by using a long tail keyword so anybody typing in for example fitness tips for men could show your pin or if they type in men losing weight that could also show your pin since you're using the same keywords so that's why long tail keywords are super important and again they're going to be less competitive so it gives you a better chance 
of ranking for some, you know, not well known or not well thought of keywords. Unlike fitness tips, that's super, you know, cliche, super popular, super well known. So it's going to be a lot harder to rank for. All right. Speaking of your profile, now that we've covered how to upload a pin, we've discussed a little bit about the search rankings and using different keywords in the search results. Let's go on to your profile now and let's take a peek at what's changed. So to get more traffic, again, you want to use some keywords in your profile name. Uh, if you've got your personal brand, like you're a fitness trainer, you still want to use your name. So I would use my name, you know, Nick Foy. And then I would add in some extra keywords into your profile name. So it would say like Nick Foy Golf or Nick Foy Fitness or, you know, Nick Foy Personal Trainer. I would use some different keywords, but I'd also include my name. However, this account, it's not about me. It's just about a golf brand, about a golf website. Uh, so I went ahead and used keywords that relate to my golf brand, Golf Practice Guides, and my website, golfpracticeguides.com. So since it uses the term golf, it uses the term golf practice. These are two different keywords I could show up for in the search results when people are typing in, you know, golf practice. You'll notice a drop down here where it says people. My profile is one of the profiles that will show up since somebody typed in these exact keywords and they're in my profile name and my profile URL here, which you can see up here, pinterest.com slash golf practice. All right, so I feel like I'm flying here. I'm going fast. I'm losing you. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap. So again, we cover the, the Pinterest create a pin right here. You want to use keywords in your description and in your pin title and your URL of your website should ideally have some of those keywords. And then Pinterest is also going to look at that URL and learn what the blog post title is, what the blog post meta description is. All that's going to help them learn more about your pin. And then you want to have an image that's, you know, 1100 to 1000 pixels tall and about 600 pixels wide. So that was the pin uploader using this create a pin tab. And that's going to help your pins get a better chance of ranking in the search results. We also talked about another tip to get them to rank in the search results would be to use more long tail keywords like golf practice tips for women. This would be much more advanced, much more long tail as opposed to just trying to rank for the two simple words golf practice. So that's another way beginner accounts can get started getting some rankings for some less competitive keywords, build that credibility and authority within Pinterest. Over time, as you grow your account, you get authority with Pinterest. You'll see that you're starting to rank for these more competitive keywords that are short tail keywords where it's only one or two words. All right. So if that all makes sense, let's go ahead and continue on. So you've got your profile here. You got your profile banner. It's basically a tilted uh, banner that does a collage or a mix of your most recent pins. So you can see here it says latest pins uh, and there's actually a link here somebody could click on and it'll take them to your latest pins. We're going to go ahead and click the edit tab here. It's just going to pop up what makes up that little banner. So it's set to latest pins. You can also change it if you want to the most recent activity, meaning pins that other people are also saving from your website as well as individual boards. If you want only pins to show up from a certain board as your header image, I'm going to leave it latest pins. Now scrolling down here, want a good professional profile photo that helps tell people clicking on your pins that you're a legit account. You're not spammy. If you don't have a profile photo that comes across kind of sketchy. Uh, if you've got, you know, some random weird profile picture, not related to your brand at all, that also could come off as sketchy or spammy. So try to use a, a professional photo that relates to your brand. In my case, I did a photo of me holding a golf club. So it looks like I'm a golf teacher, or a golf instructor. Uh, I also could have used just a photo of, you know, a golf course or a golf ball if I wanted to, but I wanted to show people I'm real. I'm not just some spammy account since I don't actually use my name in my account title. I made up for it by using an actual photo of myself. That way I don't come across as a spammy account. Underneath your title here of your profile, you'll notice they now offer monthly viewers. So this is cool. You can go to any Pinterest profile and look at how much traffic or how many viewers that profile is getting on average each month. This is data that you normally couldn't see before, but the new 2019 Pinterest lets you see it. So it's a good way to do some research if you want on your competitors as well. So if I wanted to go look up other golf accounts, I could do so. Uh, I've got my friend here called Hitting It Solid. 
He's a good buddy of mine. We communicate back and forth quite often. I can go to his profile now, and I can see he gets 313,000 monthly viewers. Uh, and, you know, he's got a nice profile. He used his profile, his website name, just like I did, Golf Practice Guides. He used Hitting It Solid that matches his website URL. And he went ahead and used this little line here, which I've seen a lot of profiles do. And then he added additional keywords. Again, that's an SEO strategy to help him rank and show up in the search results when people are typing in different keywords. So if they type in golf instructor or lower golf scores, those are relevant keywords that are going to lead people to his profile if they're searching, you know, via, via the people section. Or if, you know, we type something in here and then they can click here and they can go down here to people. And now it's going to pull up. You can see here he's showing up just for the word hitting. So here's his profile right here because it's got the keyword hitting in it. So again, that just reiterates the importance of using different keywords here in your profile title name. All right. And that's again too how you can check up on your competitors, see how many monthly viewers they're getting. And then if you notice they're getting a lot, like in his case, he's getting over 300,000, which is double what I'm getting. I could go analyze his profile more, looking at his boards, looking at his pins, looking at pin descriptions, trying to figure out what he's doing that's being successful on Pinterest. And I could try to replicate that. So that's a good way to spy on competitors and try to use what they're doing to help you grow your account as well. All right, moving on. We've got the website URL here. Underneath your profile photo, you're going to notice this little check mark. It's claimed. Website's been claimed. When you first set up your account, you want to convert to a business account. You also want to claim your website. Uh, this is how you're going to get access to analytics about your website. So you can see as we scroll down here, you're going to notice some different numbers underneath my pins. That's how you're going to be able to look at analytics and see how well your pins are doing, how many views how many clicks, repins they're getting. So in order to get a business account, all you're going to do is just go to Google, do a quick Google search, and you're going to type in Pinterest business account. And I do believe having a Pinterest business account is also going to help you do better, uh, I think, in the search results uh, because it's going to, it's one, you're going to be able to validate you're a business and you've got product pins you're probably putting out on Pinterest. So Pinterest seems to favor business accounts. They also give you access to rich pins, which are a special type of pin we'll get more into shortly. Pinterest seems to favor rich pins as well. So all you do is type in Pinterest business account. You can actually create one from scratch using this link here, or you can convert an existing personal account. You just go here, Pinterest business. And there's going to be some steps that you can click on to convert a Pinterest, a normal Pinterest account. Uh, so it says join as a business. You'll just click this button. It'll ask you for your Pinterest URL and it'll follow those steps and join as a business. So I'm not going to go too much into that. It's pretty straightforward. You can find the instructions how to do it on your own time. I'm trying to keep this video from getting too long. Uh, what next can we talk about that's going to help you? So pin design, this is another thing to grow your traffic. Um, right now with Facebook and Instagram ads, you're going to notice that they talk about too much text on the image and therefore your image won't reach as many people. I want you to realize that's only a Facebook thing. On Pinterest, you can use as much text on your image as possible and using text on your image actually helps more than it hurts. I've, without text, I don't think I would get nearly as many clicks as I get on my pins. Because just imagine for a second, this was just a golf course photo of the green, which you can see kind of behind the, the text and the white transparent block I put over it. If I got rid of everything, even this banner down here that has my URL, Golf Practice Guides, it's green. If this was just a golf photo, people would think, oh, somebody uploaded a golf photo, right? They would have no idea that it was actually a blog post that I was linking to and that this was actually a blog article. They would just think I uploaded a golf course photo of a golf course. So therefore, using text, this is kind of the symbolic way. It's kind of a Pinterest 101 code between each other. We know if we use text over an image, it's probably linking to a blog post. So it's, it's just something Pinterest users get accustomed to. So go ahead and keep using that as a status quo way to let people know you're linking to a blog post. So again, you want big, bold text that stands out, that catches people's eyes. Because again, when they're typing in things like golf in the search engines, 
they're going to have a good mix of pins showing up. So some are just going to be photos of products that people are adding. Some are going to be, you know, charts and then other ones are going to have, you know, text on it that sticks out. So there's going to be a wide variety of different designs of pins showing up in these search results. So by using, you know, the ones that have big, colorful, standout text, that's going to help attract people's eyes so they're drawn to your pin instead of all the other pins that you're competing against in the feed. So a couple design tips again, use white space. I've noticed that, you know, this isn't a good example. It's one of my more recent pins, so it hasn't had time to to rack up the numbers here, but I have noticed that, you know, when you use a lot of white on your pin, that helps make the the letters and stuff pop out better. So for example, just looking at these two, you can notice that on the white pin, the black letters seem to pop out more rather than on these pins where it's colorful behind them, it's kind of hazy looking. So using white helps make your, your text pop. Using colors, I'm using bright orange, bright green, bright blue down here for my banner at the bottom. And I also put my website URL down at the bottom to just let people know it's my website. Um, that way they know they're clicking through again to a blog or a website that it, it helps add some credibility to the pin so they don't think it's it's linking somewhere spammy. However, there are hijackers, they call them, where people will download your pin image, they'll re-upload it, and they'll add their own spammy URL to it. So that's another reason I like to add my URL to my pin image on top of it so that people can kind of hover over and see, oh, this one's linking to Foy Golf Academy, but yet it says golfpracticeguys.com. So they'll know that, you know, it's not the website that's posted on the pin image, and that might help them, you know, prevent them from clicking through that, that image of somebody else's that's linking to somebody else's website. Unfortunately, it's people don't pay that close attention. They'll still click on the pin and go to the website, and then they'll realize, hey, that's not Golf Practice Guide's website. And then from there, they can decide whether they want to stay or back, hit the back button. But that's just a fact of Pinterest right now. They've got a lot of spam, a lot of hijackers taking pins, and it will happen to you. It's happened to me. I, I notice all my pins ranking in the feed, and then when I hover them, I notice it's somebody else's URL. It's quite disappointing, uh, you know, realizing that all that traffic's going to their website because they think it's my pin and my website. They've gotten used to my brand. I have branded pins that all look the same. So people probably click on them without really looking too closely because they've just trusted that it's, you know, it's my pin. They've gotten used to me. So unfortunately that happens, but you got to live with it. All right. So that's all I've got really to say on pin design. You want to use again, a tall image. You want to use, you know, a, an attractive image. I tend to do like a layover kind of haziness to kind of cover the image up so that my text pops out more and then use some bright colors. Uh, but there's lots of different styles of design. I'd recommend creating a couple different types of designs and testing them to see which one does well. So you can see here we've tested between white backgrounds, black text, and blue backgrounds with white text. I also have some I think that are black backgrounds with white text. So I've tested all different kinds of designs. I'll, I usually create three or four different designs for the same article. So for example, this 10 hottest female golfers pin, I've probably created four or five different variations of this pin, but I've linked it to the exact same article so that I can drive all that traffic to the same blog post. I just can also segment it out and see, all right, which particular pin design did best, which one got seen the most, which one got the most clicks. So I could scroll down here and kind of take a peek, you know, which ones are doing well. And uh, one thing I've noticed is your image you use is a, a factor. You can obviously tell this one's got an attractive girl in a bikini holding a golf club. And that pin seems to get a lot more views as opposed to these other pins that use golf course images in the background. So keep that in mind, whatever niche you're in. If you're in a fitness niche, using an attractive photo of, you know, a workout person, maybe lifting weights that's pretty buff. I've got one like this one, for example, you know, for a fitness one, she's got abs showing. So just keep that in mind. Uh, your image does matter. It will impact your click through rates. If you use crappy sloppy images or some stock photo images that aren't very attractive, it's probably going to hurt your click through rates as opposed to using images that catch people's eyes like these fitness ones where you're seeing abs, you're seeing a girl in a bikini, this one, you've got a girl in a bikini with her booty that happens to relate to exercise. So different things like that can help draw in more eyes, more clicks to your pins.
All right, so that pretty much wraps up the basics of optimizing your profile. We've covered about your title using keywords, using your URL, getting it verified or claimed, uh, adding in keywords to your description, and then we've already covered your pins, how to design them, tall images, you know, bold, popping off the page text. You also want to make sure that whatever words you use are attractive. You want to make engaging titles on your, on your pin images to actually entice click-throughs. Um, and then again, you want to stamp your website probably somewhere on your pin so that you can kind of claim it as yours to try to prevent people from hijacking and copywriting it. Uh, other tips we've got for you today. What else has changed? Let's go into the Pinterest analytics next. Go to the website section. So one of the best ways to grow your website traffic is to monitor what pins are being successful. So inside analytics, once you've converted your normal account to a business account, you get all kinds of detailed information like impressions, saves, how many people on average each day are saving, what saves you're getting each individual day. You can also look at clicks, how many clicks you're getting back to your website. You want to see an uptrending line over time. So day by day, I can monitor, okay, I'm getting you know, 400 clicks today, why did I get 400 clicks? So I could go back and look at what particular pins got pinned on February 10th in my profile, and that could give me an indication of why I got so many repins that day. Um, other days when it drops off, so you can just really study your analytics on a deep, deep level to try to learn what's working, what's not working, and that you wanna then take and do more of what's working, obviously, and that's how you're gonna grow your traffic. So some different things you can do, you can use the most clicked pins data here. So if I analyze this, I'm gonna notice my exercise pins are doing the best. We've got six strength exercises, four golf exercises, flexibility exercises. So these seem to be a topic people care most about on Pinterest is exercise and fitness. Even though I'm in the golf niche, I'm still getting lots of interest on fitness and exercise. So depending on what niche you're in, that could indicate what types of content is going to be most successful for your brand. Uh, as we scroll down here, you know, we just analyze over and over. You're going to see a lot of these same pins. These are all separate copies. Every time somebody repins your pin, it creates a new fresh copy on their profile. Same when you upload a new pin to your profile. It might be the exact same pin. It will just be a fresh copy since you uploaded a completely new image with its own you know URL even though the URL is the same it's it's a fresh image so you're going to notice the same you know image showing up over and over here six exercises six exercises six exercises so that just further convinces me that you know exercise happens to be a topic my audience cares most about now I'm going to take that information I'm going to go back to my blog or my website and I'm going to start drafting more blog articles related to exercise and that's how then I'm going to come back to Pinterest upload more pins on Pinterest related to those blog articles and that's going to drive my traffic even higher on Pinterest. Additionally, in analytics, you can look at your top performing boards. So let's get back here into Pinterest analytics. So this is just showing us pins, but if we go down here to the very bottom, it's going to show us our best boards. So boards with the most clicked pins. So again, some of these boards are going to be mine. Some of these boards are going to be coming from other Pinterest users. So we can kind of see, you know, why certain boards are getting the best results by clicking into those boards. It could be the board description. Uh, it could be the relevancy. So for example, all these boards have one thing in common. They're all titled with the word golf. So that obviously tells Pinterest that these boards are about golf. And then when the golf pins get saved to these boards, that's going to then tell Pinterest that your pin's about golf because it happened to be saved to a, a board titled golf, and that helps it do better. So you're going to notice that combination of, of keywords in your description, keywords in your board description, as well as the pin description seems to be a good combo for helping your pins get, get more traction. All right, all time. This is another tab to click into. Again, to use for feedback, you can see what pins are doing well all time. Try to create more content similar to those pins since that seems to be what's resonating best with your audience. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Just a quick recap and then I might think of a few more tips I can leave you as a bonus before heading off. So number one, you want to have an engaging profile so that when people click through to your profile, it looks legit. 
It's also gonna help your profile rank better in the search results. The search is how you're gonna get the most traffic to your pins, to your website. It's just gonna take a while to build up to. So initially you wanna start off on the right foot by having a good profile name, having a website connected, having a good profile description, a good profile photo, all these things are important. Additionally, you want to get your Pinterest account converted to a business account. That's gonna give you access to analytics. It's gonna give you access to ads if you run promoted pins where you pay money to show your pins at the top of the search results rather than trying to rank there organically and naturally. Uh, and then on top of that, you wanna sign up for rich pins. So all you're gonna do is come out here to Google again, type in rich pins validator, and that's gonna pull up a page from Pinterest under the developers.pinterest URL here. Just click into this page. It's gonna walk you through the steps on how to validate your website so that your pins start showing up as rich pins. And what that's gonna do is it's basically going to allow more information on your pins than normal. So let's go ahead and click into one to show you what that looks like. So it goes back to the whole part about Google, your meta description, your blog title. When you validate rich pins, Pinterest is gonna analyze your blog post. It's gonna look for what your title of your blog post is, and it's gonna look for your meta description. So here's my meta description of my blog post. This is what shows up out on Google, and that's what's showing up here because I validated with rich pins rather than the description that I typed in when I uploaded the pin. You still wanna type in a keyword rich description like I did here. You still wanna use hashtags like I did here. It just pushes your description down here to the bottom. Your meta description from the rich pin is what takes precedent up here at the top. Now, if you don't have rich pins validated yet, then obviously your description's what's gonna be showing up here underneath your website URL. So until you get rich pins enabled, you know that's what's gonna show, but once rich pins get enabled, it's gonna pull data from your website. It's gonna show additional information here, which makes your pins uh, you know more credible it seems there's some data that backs up having rich pins helps you get higher click-through rates to your website than not having rich pins so that's one of the main reasons why you should sign up for it once you have a business account right away when you create your profile all right we also went over the pin again all the different specs for the image uh, different things you can test creating multiple pin image designs testing which ones get the best click-through rates, the most saves, clicks, things like that. And you can move forward using that particular design style. You also wanna make multiple pins per blog post. So five chipping tips here, for example, this pin, I'll create five different variations with different images, different you know titles on my image. So instead of saying the same thing, five chipping tips to get up and down like Phil Mickelson, I might change it up and say, the five best chipping tips, 2019, or five chipping tips to lower your golf score. You know, I'll come up with different catchy titles to put on my pin image. I'll create five different variations of that pin. I'll pin one of them today, and then I'll schedule out the other four to go out different times throughout the month. You don't wanna pin more than the same pin twice. Now to do so, we're gonna talk a little bit about Tailwind. I did forget to cover them today. Tailwind is another way you're gonna grow your traffic. It's a scheduling tool. So it's a way to upload pins, schedule them so they pin on their own. You don't have to worry about logging in every half hour and pinning a new pin. Instead, you schedule them to Tailwind, let Tailwind do it for you. Uh, that way I can schedule in bulk so I can go save a couple hundred pins from my profile at a time, um, You know, linking to all the different blog posts, creating fresh new pins. And once I've got those uploaded to like a secret board that doesn't show on my profile, I'll go in and save them all to the drafts of Tailwind. So once you're logged into Tailwind, you'll see they've got a draft section. Uh, you save your pins to Tailwind as a draft, and later you can go in and set up your schedule inside of Tailwind, telling them how frequently you want to pin. It's recommended you pin 20 to 30 times a day. This is an important statistic. You can see how many pins are out here in Pinterest world. So obviously the more volume of content you put out, the better chance you're gonna get seen on Pinterest since so much content's being uploaded to Pinterest every hour. You wanna also be uploading high volumes of pins. So if we go here to pins, I think I've, I've now uploaded, I don't know, four or 5,000 pins. I've uploaded thousands of pins. Yeah, I'm up to 2,600. I have deleted a lot of pins in the past, which is another thing you don't wanna do anymore in 2019. You should no longer be deleting pins that didn't perform well. Instead, just leave them on your profile. You never know, at some point, 
those pins might take off and start going viral. If you delete them, you delete the chance of that happening and that could hurt you in the long run. So I used to delete pins, but I probably uploaded a couple thousand more than here, four to 5,000. But in the end, you know, uploading 20 to 30 a day, that's probably a good rate that's gonna help you boost your traffic. So if right now, if you're only uploading three or four pins a day and you're wondering why you're not getting much traffic from Pinterest, it's because you need to ramp up your pinning volume. Now, if you don't have enough content on your website to be able to pin 20 to 30 times a day, then that's another indicator to you that you need to get your content game stepped up. You need to start publishing more blog posts. Right now, I'm publishing one blog post every day to my blog, and I've seen tremendous traffic growth, not only from Pinterest, but also Google traffic, more blog posts, more opportunity to get found in Google. Same thing with Pinterest, more blog posts, that results in more Pinterest pins I can upload to Pinterest, and that results in more traffic back to my website. So you get the point here, high volume of content, upload 20 to 30 pins a day, create tons of content every day, whether it's YouTube videos, blog posts, you know, Instagram posts that you're uploading onto Pinterest. Inside your settings, you can go to settings here, you can actually connect your YouTube account and your Instagram account to your Pinterest account and you can look at analytics just like you can connect your website and look at website analytics. So that's another cool feature they've added in 2019. Um, so yeah, that's Tailwind for you. I've kind of gone off there on a little rant, but basically upload 20 to 30 pins uh, a day to Pinterest. You can use Tailwind to help schedule those out for you so that you're, you're every hour you're publishing two to three pins per hour. Um, throughout the day during the busy hours Pinterest will let or Tailwind will let you know what the optimal hours are they've got a little tool that that kind of analyzes your pins to tell you okay at eight o'clock pins usually have the best chance of getting seen so it'll show whether it's green light gray or red green being the best times light gray being okay and red not being good times to post so you could set your schedule on Monday Tuesday Wednesday all the way through Sunday what time slots you want your pins to go pinned out to and it'll just keep repeating that schedule every week for you. All that it'll do is you'll upload the pins into Tailwind and then it will um, fill in those time slots for you. And that's how it'll shoot your pins out onto Pinterest. All right, guys, I think that's going to cover it for today. I might make a part two if there's other things that I left off I forgot about. But this is already a long enough video. So if you stayed through the whole time, you're a champ. I appreciate you. Make sure you like my video to tell me it was good. Leave a helpful comment below how much you enjoyed this video so I can make part two in the future. And, uh, you know, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'd appreciate growing my audience. We're right around 3,000 at the time of this video, 3,000 YouTube subscribers. So if you're coming several months down the road right now, uh, you know, it'll be cool to see how far we've come, how much we've grown. And you can help us by hitting that subscribe button. Thanks so much again for watching. I'll see you guys in part two. I'm sure I'll do a part two. There's so much that we can do to grow our Pinterest traffic, but these are the basic tips I could think of off the top of my head today on pin design, pin descriptions, board design, board descriptions, profile descriptions, and how to use analytics to figure out what's working, what's not working, and do more of what's working. And then lastly, we covered Tailwind, uh, you know, all the things you can do with Tailwind, like scheduling your pins, uploading 20 to 30 times a day, and creating more blog content so that you have more pins to upload in your Tailwind account. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.